Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a full face of drugstore throwbacks. So I'm gonna be doing today's look using a bunch of makeup from the drugstore that I have not touched in a very long time. There is one product that I've been using a lot lately and that was kind of the inspiration for this whole video, but I'll show you what that is when we get to that in the video. But before we get to the makeup, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Sonia, AKA Sister Philly, and I hope that you'll consider subscribing subscribing today and I hope you like the video so let's jump right into it all right so starting off with foundation we're going to be revisiting Maybelline fit me matte and poreless I have two shades here this is 335 classic tan and 338 spicy brown so I'm not quite sure how I used to mix these two shades together. I think maybe I was mixing them um, maybe like in the summertime when my skin was just a little darker but I'm not sure so I'm starting off with 335 classic tan to see how that works then i'll mix in some of the darker color if i feel like i need to so i do remember one of the things i didn't like about this foundation is that it doesn't have a pump so i do have to like pour it onto my finger and then put it onto my face but other than that there's not very many drugstore foundations that i can get down with but this is one of them that i used to really really like so i'm just putting a little bit more of the 335 on but I feel like this shade is okay by itself. So I think I'm just gonna stick with this one. But like I said, I think I used to mix in some of that spicy brown color in the summer. But this one is looking okay so far. I know a lot of people like the Maybelline, I think it's called the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. I think it's supposed to be just like a more matte and a more like long wear version of this one. And I did try that, but now it's been a while. I think I tried that when it first came out. So I don't know like if they extended the range, but I know when I first tried it, they really didn't have a shade that worked for me. So I only used that one a couple of times before I just gave up on it. Now, even though with this one, like I said, sometimes I do have to mix two shades together. I really like the finish of it. And because the Super Stay Foundation is more full coverage than this one, I think that's why I like this one better because I don't like really like full coverage foundation. I usually go for more like a medium coverage. Okay, so this is what my foundation is looking like. And this is like a pretty good match to my neck. So yeah, I'm not gonna go in with the darker shade. I do think it's coming off like a little tiny bit too yellow than I would prefer. But for the most part, I think it's a really good match. So we're just gonna stick with that. And again, it was the shade 335 Spicy Brown. And moving on to concealer, I'm gonna be using my NYX HD concealer in the shade Cool Tan. This was like all I used to ever use before I like started looking into more higher end um, concealers. But this one like really used to be like all I knew in terms of concealer and I think it was when I started using uh was it NARS Radiant Creamy I think I think that's when I finally put this NYX one down and moved on to something else and if I recall correctly I don't think this one has quite as much coverage as NARS or like some of the other concealers that I use nowadays but we'll see all right I'm just gonna tap this on and blend it out this way with my brush and I'm just going to tap it kind of like right where I want the most coverage and I try very hard not to get my concealer like right on my immediate under eye area because of those lines that I have right there. Okay, so that's one coat of the concealer applied. I'm going to go in with another coat and looking at the color of this it is quite similar to my foundation shade and you know now that I've moved on to other things I kind of feel like this color could be just a little bit brighter for an under eye but I'm hoping that when I go back over this with some setting powder that the setting powder will also help to brighten my under eye area a little bit so I'm also putting a little bit of the concealer right on the corners of my mouth because I have dark spots right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna blend out here on my chin and right on my forehead. 
Yeah, see, I feel like this concealer just blended right into my forehead and you can't even see it, but oh well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the concealer sit on my under eye area and on the corners of my mouth and do my eyebrows next. So this is the product that I kind of themed this whole video around. This is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit. That's what this looks like. And I'm gonna be focusing on these two shades here. This one down here is a wax that I never use, but this is the shade or product rather that I have been using lately. I've been using this on my brows for maybe like the past going on month really. And I only started using it because I ran out of my LA Girl Brow Pencil, which is the one that I had been using before I kind of switched over to this. And one of my pet peeves with all brow pencils is that you really can't tell how much product you have left until it like completely runs out on you. So that's what happened. So I just picked up this and said, okay, I'm gonna use this because it's like all I have. And I kind of been using it ever since. So I do normally do my brows off camera for those of you who may be new here, but I'm gonna do one of them on camera since I am using a product that I have never used on camera. I don't, I'm pretty sure I've never used this one in one of my videos. So all I'm doing is toward the tail of my brow, I've mixed those two shades, those two brown shades together. And then toward the front part of the brow, I'm using just the lighter shade. And I don't care what product I'm using for my brows, I always have a problem drawing a really nice tail. So sometimes I just like give up basically, but I'm trying to, you know, draw like a tapered off tail for my brow. And I actually don't like for my brows to look like super neat because I feel like they just look a bit more natural when they look kind of like, I don't know, just thrown on. So you see how in the corner of the brow to me, that looks a bit too squared off. So I'm gonna take a spoolie and just kinda run through just the very front of the brow, just to try and like, not make it look so squared. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna do the other brow off camera and I'll be right back. So I don't really like how this brow came out, but I feel like every time I try to fix it, I make it even worse, so I'm just gonna stop right there. Like, even though I don't really like for my brows to look really neat and perfect, I'm still like never satisfied with them. But anyway, they're done. So I'm gonna move back to the concealer. So I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm just gonna start blending out the second layer of concealer. And I'm sure most of you guys know that when you let the concealer sit, before you go to blend it out. It just gives you more coverage when you blend it. So that's why I did that. For my setting powder, I'm gonna be using the Black Opal Invisible Oil Blocking Powder. And this used to be my favorite powder and I think I switched from this to the Maybelline powder, I believe. But let me show you the color of this powder if I can. This one has like a really like pinky, beigey type shade. And I love these types of colors for powders. I know a lot of people really like yellow powders, but I really need something that is more on the pink side for my skin because I have a cool undertone. So I'm going to set my under eye area with this. I had to go damp my sponge real quick. So I'm just gonna take a damp sponge. This is the Sonia Kashuk sponge and I'm just gonna set my under eye area with this. And I'm hoping that it will add a little bit of brightness to this area as well, because the concealer, it looks okay, but I feel like I would like for my under eye area to be just a little bit lighter than what it is. All right, let me know what you think. I don't really think it did a good job at brightening that area, but it, it did set it nicely, but not really what I was going for, but not the end of the world either. So I'm gonna take some more of that same powder on my big fluffy brush, and I'm gonna use this to set 
the rest of my face. And speaking of setting my face, I feel like this, the Maybelline foundation, this is the only matte finish foundation that I feel the need to set with a powder. The rest of them I don't bother with, but this one, even though it does have a really nice matte finish, it will get oily like pretty fast. So I still go ahead and set it. All right, we're gonna go into eye makeup next and I don't really have a throwback product for uh, to use as a lid primer. So I'm gonna use another NYX concealer. This one is in the shade Nude Beige. So don't ask me why I bought this because it's clearly like way too light for me, but because I can't use it for anything else, I can use it as a lid primer because I do really like like bright colors on my lid or for primers. So I'm gonna use this on my lid area. And I'm just blending it out with my concealer brush. This is actually the e.l.f. I think it's called the e.l.f. C eyeshadow brush, but I use it for my lid concealer. And then I'm gonna take the same NYX concealer that I used on my under eye area and I'm gonna use this as my primer right along my brow bone. And I do always use two different color concealers or primers on my lid, just in case you're watching me for the first time. And for eyeshadow, I'm using the Maybelline City Mini Palette, and this one is in Graffiti Pop. Maybelline has a bunch of these mini palettes, and I love them even though I only have two. I also have, I think it's called Downtown Sunrise, and it's more of like a, um, it has like a corally shade to it and some browns and some maybe like a, a silvery shade also. But this one, I like it better because of these three colors here. Now, even though I really like all three of these colors, I don't know if I'm gonna use all three today because these three colors on the bottom, I feel like you can also use them for more of like an everyday look. And I feel like that's what I'm gonna do today. So I might change my mind as I go along, but I think I'm gonna start off with this shade here. This is like a, a taupey um, shade. And I think I'm gonna put that on most of my lid. This shade reminds me of a shade in one of my Milani palettes. I can't think of the name of it, but this to me, like I love taupey shimmery shades. I think that they complement my skin tone really well. And I feel like this is one of those shades that I could wear like every single day and never get tired of it. All right, now I'm gonna go into this dark purple shade. I'm gonna use that on the outer corner just to deepen it out a little bit. I'm just gonna stick with this same brush. I normally switch brushes for what I'm about to do, but I'm just gonna stick with the same brush and just very lightly drag this like further into my crease. Then I'm gonna take some of this shade here. This one will probably not show up on my skin tone too much, which is what I want, but I'm just gonna use this shade to kind of like diffuse everything out and just kind of like blend these two colors together. And it is like really barely showing up on my skin. So when I get to the outer corner, I am just going to blend that purple in with it. Otherwise, it's just gonna look like nothing is in that area. So I feel like right in this spot right here, it looks like the eyeshadow is skipping. So I'm gonna mix these two colors together, this shade and that deep purple. I'm gonna mix those colors together on this brush to try and get that area right there because it looks like there's nothing there. And I don't think that that's the eyeshadow. I think it's just the, sh the color of that shade is just barely showing up on my skin. 
I'm taking some more of this purple and I'm going to concentrate it on the outer part of my lower lash line, just on the very outer corner. And then I'm picking up some more of that purple on my small blender brush and I'm just going to blend out this area right here just to connect the eyeshadow on the top and the bottom lashes. So I'm like barely touching my skin here, but I just want to connect the two so that everything looks like put together. So the eye look is almost complete. I'm going to go back just a little later on to finish that up, but I had a lot of fun using that palette because that was my first time in a long time picking that up. So let's move on to bronzer. And this is not an actual bronzer, but this is what I used to use all the time to bronze my skin. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the shade Dark. I'm going to open it up and show y'all the color of it. So hopefully you can see that it's like a reddish brown powder and that's why I love this as a bronzer because I love bronzers that run red. A lot of bronzers out there, they run like yellow and golden and I need something that runs a bit more red and this is a really nice powder on my skin tone. The only thing is because the powder is kind of dark, I do have to like tread lightly with it otherwise I'll end up just applying way too much. But I hope y'all can see that that adds just a little bit of dimension to my skin tone. I'm putting it like right above the hollow of my cheek. I'm going to put a little bit more like right around my jawline here. And if I apply it correctly and I don't go too heavy handed with it, it gives my skin like a nice subtle glow because of the red undertone to it. I'm also going to put a little bit on my forehead. And I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush and also slightly bronze slash contour my nose. I'm picking up the brush that I use for my foundation and I'm just going to lightly dab it over my bronzer. I do this every time I do my makeup because I always feel like I just want to soften the nose out a little bit so that it doesn't look super harsh. And for my blush today, I'm going to be using the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Luminoso. Now, I used to use this blush like crazy, like pretty much every single day. But I do remember the last time I used it, I thought that it was a bit light and maybe even a little too luminous on my skin tone. And I think that's just because since then I've moved on to uh, blushes that are a bit deeper, more corally and more peachy. And also I prefer blushes that are just a bit more matte. But I was like really hooked on this just before I moved on to other things. So that's why I picked this one up for today. I've always wanted to try this blush in another shade. I just never got around to it. So even though I did used to really like this one, I don't know if you can like it to me, it's not really coming off on camera, but this one is just a bit more pink than what I've gotten used to over the years. But when I first tried this blush, I loved it and I used to use it like every single day. Mm, I don't know. This is making me want to start playing around with this a bit more. I really like that. Let me know what y'all think. All right, moving on to highlighter. I'm very excited about this. This is the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter in Molten Rose Gold. I have this one and I also have Molten Peach. I love Molten Peach, but I feel like it doesn't hold a candle to Molten Rose Gold. I love this highlighter, but again, I just have not picked it up in a very, very, very long time. All right, so I'm just going to apply some of this to the high points of my cheek. And I'm also putting it around like the tail of my brow bone. And I love rose gold highlighters. And to me, this is just like 
the perfect rose gold highlighter. It really is. I'm going to put just a little bit down the center of my nose as well. And I was going to go back into my Maybelline palette and I was going to use this shade here. I was going to use this shade as my inner corner, but I'm going to use the Maybelline highlighter instead. So just picking up some more on a pencil brush. I really like this highlighter, y'all. I feel like most people like Molten Gold, which is the yellow one. That's a really nice one too, but I prefer like silvery or pinky or peachy highlighters. Yeah, I'm glad I picked that instead of going back into the Maybelline one. Okay, so I'm going to set everything in place. Now, this next product is going to be kind of tricky for me. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte Finish Setting Spray. I decided to try this out just because of the price. I feel like this costs like $4, and I really like it as a setting spray. It has like mixed reviews on Ulta. I really like the way that it sets the makeup and kind of holds it in place. But the nozzle on this thing gets stuck, which is why I eventually just stopped using it. So I did try to test it out like before I started filming and it's already getting stuck. So this one is going to be kind of difficult for me to use. But if you decide to try this out, I do think it does a really good job at actually like setting your makeup and um, keeping helping to keep everything in place. See, I keep having to manually like pull this back up so that I can get another squirt out. All right, so it took me a little minute to set my face because I had to keep waiting for the nozzle to pull back up. But now we're going to move on to highlighter. No, eyeliner. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Liner Liquid Eyeliner. So I used to really think that I was doing something with this. This is a brown liquid liner i used to use brown liners before i moved on to black so i don't use this anymore because it's just you know more liquidy than the types of liners that i use today but i'm just going to apply this very very close to my lash line i'm just making sure y'all can see what i'm doing And it looks okay. I feel like you may not be able to really see, really notice it. But I use eyeliner for the sake of making my lash line look thicker because I don't wear uh, false lashes. So it did do that, but I just don't think it has much of an impact as a black liner. And this liner does come in black. I just never bothered to try it. So eyeliner is on and then moving on to mascara. This product I used to love it so much this is the maybelline colossal big shot mascara now i'm going to be using the waterproof version today i usually do not wear waterproof mascara because i think it's just too hard to get off but i did have this in the non waterproof version and i just used it all up it's really um dried out so i'm going to be using the waterproof one because this makeup isn't staying on very long anyway so i'm going to go ahead and apply this to my top and bottom lashes and I do take mascara kind of seriously because I don't wear falsies so I do really like to play around with different mascaras this is one of the best mascaras for both drugstore and high-end that I've ever used it's nice and black it makes your lashes look really nice and long and it's a comfortable formula. But like I said, this is the waterproof one, which I normally don't use. But the non-waterproof one to me is just as good. All right, I'm gonna finish applying my mascara off camera and I'll be back. All right, my eyes are all done and I'm finishing everything off with what used to be like my favorite lipstick of all time. And I can't believe that I haven't picked this lipstick up in so long. I just forgot about it, I guess. But I'm going to finish everything off with the Maybelline, uh, what is this called? Maybelline Matte Lipstick, Maybelline Color Sensational Matte Lipstick, I think it's called. This one is in the color Brown Blush. 
so this is what this one looks like i do have a video on my channel i did um i swatched all of my maybelline lipsticks because i have quite a few and i did use this one in that video and i think i saved this one for last because it's my favorite maybelline lipstick Now, even though this shade is called Brown Blush, it does look like it has like more of like a pinky tone to it because it does. But I think for my skin tone, it's a really nice like subtle pink. It gives my, my lips just like a hint of color without being like too dramatic. And to me, it's like a really nice everyday color. Okay, you guys, so here we are. This is my finished look using a whole bunch of drugstore throwbacks. Let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know what you thought about any of the products that I use today or any of these products that you used to use, some of them that you still use today. Just let me know. So I really hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and I hope you'll consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And I hope to see y'all back for my next one. Until then, take care. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.